Good evening and welcome to another Bible study here at Bread of Life East Church. Amen. I'm our Bishop Otis L. Cobbins, and I'm here in the sanctuary uh, with our associate, Minister Bruce Rice. How you doing? As always, we want to open up with a word of prayer. Brother Bruce, I'm going to let you open up tonight. Thank you. Father, we just come right now, God, just to give you glory right now, Father, through your word. God, Hallelujah. I pray, Lord, that you just hide us behind the veil, God, that we may be able to speak the truths of God on tonight, God, so that your people may be set free, God, so that your people may get a higher understanding, that your people may get be drawn closer to you, God, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray, God, that all that are hearing, God, that their hearts are tethered, God, to be able to hear the word on tonight, God, yes, and receive what thus saith the Lord in this time, God. For we are in a time, God, where our people need to come together and unify themselves in the word of God and be strong, God. Yes, Lord. And in your power of your might, God, and not in our own power, God. But lean not to our own understanding, but in all our ways acknowledge you, God. And, Father, I pray, God, that your word go out, God, and accomplish that that it is set to accomplish on tonight, Father. We give you the glory, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. And, uh, we just want to admonish everyone to, uh, to pray for our president. Amen. You know, and pray for our president that's about to come in. Yes, sir. As Trump goes out and Biden comes in, pray yes, for sir. them both. Amen. We need to pray for a smooth transition because things are looking a little rough at this point. Okay. And the last thing we need is more division, you know, in our country. <clears throat> the last thing we need is more friction yeah. in our country. You know, I think uh, our president needs to go ahead and concede. Amen. It's over. If something wrong was done, you know, sometimes we just have to accept Amen. what God allows. Amen. You know, as Christians, many times we are persecuted. Matter of fact, the Bible said those that will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. That's right. I'm not saying that Trump's a Christian. I'm not saying he's being persecuted. What I'm, once, what I'm saying is the word of God teaches us how to deal with adversity, deal with persecution, the Amen. type of character and behavior and the response that we need to give when people do us wrong. Yeah. Because ultimately, God is the righteous judge. You know, we, we do what we can in order to uh, basically be able to uh, enjoy the rights that we have here in the United States. And we have a lot of liberties and freedoms and rights that are available to all people. Not all people seem to get them because you have people that are in high places that don't want to see equality across the board. You know, they have their own agenda, you know, That's politically, right. socially, religiously, financially. There's still a lot of gaps in our system, but not because the system is broken, because there are broken people that are running the Amen. system. But ultimately, God is in control. Amen. Yes. Amen. During the persecution of the Christians, you know, Paul wrote, you know, to the saints, honor the king. Yes. And the king at the time was Nero, and he was persecuting the Christians and hanging yes. them and, and uh, executing them, boiling them and all. And, yes. And feeding them to the lions. But nevertheless, he said, honor the king. Why? Because all authority is, is of God, Amen. whether he ordained it by divine providence or ordained it by divine permission. Mm. There are some things that God has allowed. Yeah. And we need to accept what God has allowed. If we think God is in control, if we believe that God is in control, yeah. then the things that we see that we don't like, God has allowed them. So you need to gird up your loins to be able to Come get on. through the things that God has allowed, Amen. even when it seems like those things are working against you. Mm -hmm. Children of Israel went into bondage. Joseph went into slavery. You know, certain things happen to a lot of believers. Job lost his health, his finances, his Amen. children, lost everything. You know, even lost his reputation because his friends thought he was in sin. Right. But nevertheless, he said, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We need to have a Christian response to the world's persecution. Amen. Amen. I know that's a tough pill to swallow, but Jesus never promised us a flower bed of ease. No. He said that there will be he trials said, and tribulations. He said they will hate you only because they hate me. Yeah. The world loves its own. They love those that are like them. But when you become a new creature in Christ Jesus, you become a person of a different kingdom. Your citizenship, or shall I say your spiritual citizenship in your kingdom is not of this world because Jesus told Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. I'm a king, but my kingdom is not of this world. this world. Even though he is, you know, the owner of the earth, it was the yes. kingdom rule and the system that he was talking about is not of this world. Amen. So the way that we respond to people shouldn't be the way of the world. It should be the way of the kingdom. Amen. That means we go the extra mile, we turn the other cheek, and we forgive seven times 70, and we keep our vows 
according to the word of God, keep our vows even if it sets us at Amen. disadvantage. That's right. Amen. Amen. Now, Brother Bruce, uh, this is uh, what the Lord gave him, and we want to talk about this. Amen. And he uh, wanted to talk about the whole armor of God. Amen. So those of you that are with us today, y'all, whether in the sanctuary or on Facebook or uh, uh, YouTube, just grab your Bibles and let's go to Ephesians chapter 6. Amen. And we're going to begin at verse 11. You want to talk a little bit about that before we go into it, Brother Bruce? Verse 11. Oh, all of um, it, yeah, the whole armor of God. Yeah. Oh, how, even uh, how God gave this or inspired you to look at this. I, the reason why God <clears throat> gave me this is that because of the times we're living in. Amen. We're living in some hard times. Uh, and people are not, I don't think they're, they keep their mind on the fact that we're at warfare, that we as believers, we're in a war, we're in battle. We are, we are servants of the Lord, but we're also soldiers of the Lord. We're also, we're, we're called to be conquerors, we're called to be victorious, but in that being victorious and being conquerors, you have to be in war. Amen. So God was showing me how as believers, some of us are fit for battle. Yeah. We ready. If, if, if we're called up on to go to warfare, we can go to war right now. But there's a lot of the, the Christians that aren't ready yet for the battle that we're about to fight right now. Yeah, we're not and ready so, for the battle we're fighting already. Already. So <laughs> we have to really get ourselves prepared for the battle that's coming. Right. That's, that, that some of us are in and being, and being defeated because we're not fit. And God showed me, he said that, they don't put me on on a daily battle, on a daily, daily um, time. It's only when things get rough that you want to call on God. But he says to seek him daily, to seek God in every aspect of our lives will give us victory in everyday life. Right. But when we don't put on the armor of God, it says, Put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. The armor is not ours. We can't put on us. We can't put <laughs> on our attitude. We can't put on our anger, our frustrations. We have to put on the armor that God has already prepared for us. He's already set it up for us, and he's already given it to us through Christ on the cross. Right. It's already ours. All we have to do is put, put it, it on. on. <laughs> it's, it's simple. He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of this righteousness. Then all these <coughs> other things will be added unto you. You can't get other things without first seeking God, without first putting on God. When you look at the armor, you look at uh, uh, a Roman's, when Paul wrote this, it was a Roman's uh, 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 battle, gu battle guard. It was his shield. It was his armor that he was putting on. But he used the metaphor of a Roman soldier. And when you look at it, and it says you're putting on the armor of God, he's using God's weapons of warfare to make it plain to the believer what is manifested on this earth and in the spirit realm for you to be def for you to be victorious? Right. Let me look at something here in chapter one, you know, because chapter, chapter one of Ephesians, you know, uh, beginning of uh, verse two. Whoa. You know, I, I just want to, you know, because I think we need to be aware of something when we're talking about putting on the whole arm. The arm is to protect something, you know, it's a, you know, as you said, to, to defend us against the wiles of the devil, yeah. but, but the devil's after something. He's after something. And if something. you look at uh, uh, verse 2, it says, Grace be to you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ. So we possess Spiritual blessings, all spiritual blessings. Amen. According as he has chosen us in him before, before the foundations foundation. of the world. Come on. You know, that denotes, you know, uh, uh, how we're sanctified yeah. through Jesus Christ and his, his crucifixion, as you said earlier, yeah. because the Bible declared that he was slain from the foundations of the world. 
But see, this is God speaking from a perspective of eternity, that we should be holy. So from the beginning, God declared that we should be holy That's good. and without blame before him in a spirit or relationship that's based upon love. Amen. Amen. I got that. And see what the enemy is after. He's after that holy nature. Yeah, He's man. after that peaceful, loving uh, uh, relationship that is with God the Father. That's good. Sin severs our relationship with God. Yeah. That's why God, you know, through Christ Jesus, destroyed the power of sin so man could once again be reconciled with right. God and have oneness with God and walk with God. And the enemy hates that relationship because yes. he once enjoyed that yes. as the anointed chair before he was kicked out of heaven. So he's jealous. You know, people get jealous, Amen. you know, when you take their position. Yeah, yeah, they do. <laughs> Even if they lose their position of their own fault, the devil is that way. And so we need to understand we, have, we possess spiritual blessing and a wonderful holy status and loving relationship with God that the enemy is after. Yeah. Amen. So he wants to destroy it. that. So yes, how does sir. he do it? Because we have free will, because we have the power of the Holy Spirit, you know, even, you know, from what you know, God put in Adam and Eve, Amen. the elements of that is Amen. still within us. And when we're born again, we have the fullness of the God here once again. We might not have the glorified body, but we do have the renewed spirit whereby which we can stand against the wiles of the devil. When that happened, when he caused them to corrupt themselves because he couldn't make them sin. Mm. The devil cannot twist your arm and make you sin. No, he, can. he can't do that. He doesn't have that type of power. He's, his power is only in deception. Yeah. Amen? But you have a power within you, which is the mind of Christ. Amen. And with the mind of Christ, you won't be deceived. The Bible says there's going to be strong deceptions and strong delusions in earth in the last days. And I believe we're living in the last days. He said if it were possible, that, that, that the deception would even fool the very elect. But the elect of God have the mind of Christ. The born again have the spirit of God residing in them, and it's very difficult, really impossible, to deceive a person that has real discernment of the Holy Spirit because they do have the whole armor of God whereby which they're protected and defended from the wiles of the devil. Just want to go there, you know, you know, for, for a second. And then again, let's let's go back to verse 11 where he started. Put on the whole armor of God. All right? It's up for us to do it. That's by free will. God has made it available, but you may, must make the choice to put it on. Mm -hmm. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. What is, what's, what's the wiles of the devil? The wiles of the devil are strategies and schemes. That's what he has. He has a strategy against mankind. He has a plan against mankind. He has schemes and devices, trickery and deception against mankind so that you might turn from the word of God and walk in self-deception. The Bible said, if you're a hearer of the word but not a doer, you deceive yourself. Yeah. You corrupt yourself. The devil didn't make you do it. He only set a trap that you fell into because you didn't think with the mind of Christ. You didn't see with the eyes of God. You didn't have a pure heart where you could see the plan of God, the wisdom of God. You didn't have the ears to hear what the Spirit has to say to the churches to keep them from walking into the traps of the devil. You won't grow in the spirit, which gives you the ability to see things afar off, whereby which you won't fall, according to the, uh, the letters uh, written uh, by the Apostle Peter, or the epistles Amen. written by the Apostle Peter. You know, and, but, but, but if you fail to put on the whole armor, the you whole must have armor. more than a helmet of salvation. Come on. You got to put the whole armor, God. You must do more than gird up your loins with truth. You must put on the whole armor because every piece is necessary for your keeping. Because wherever you're not protected, you will be vulnerable to the wiles of the devil, the schemes and the strategies of the devil. You cannot leave the word of God. If you leave the word of God, the Bible says you immediately forget what manner of man you are. And the word of God is the sword of the spirit, which we're going to read. But in all these things, in all these things, helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, loins girded by with truth, gospel of peace, and so on and so forth, all those things basically are predicated on the truth. All of them have truth. elements of God's truth, truth dwelling within them for our protection in every facet of life. Amen? Amen. Amen. Bishop, Put on the said, whole armor of God. You said something about putting on, uh, it's, it's all predicated on the truth. Uh, putting on the breast, on the uh, belt of truth, when you gird up your loins, um, 
when Paul was writing this, he was talking about how a man, when he wore the long garments back in the day, they wore, looked like dresses almost. Yeah. But when he was ready to go to battle, he would have to take that skirt and he would tie it around his whole, yeah, gird it up. girded up his whole uh, section down there so that his legs would be free to fight, to kick, to run, to do whatever he had to do. But when you put on the armor, they put it on first because the breastplate hooked to it. Yeah. The helmet hooked to the breastplate. The shoes of the gospel hooked to the uh, belt of truth as well. So I asked some people before, I said, what do you have to put on first in order to operate fully in the full armor? Because there's an order to putting it on. And a lot of people said the helmet of salvation because it guards your thinking process. It, it, it helps you to keep your mind on Christ. It keeps you girded in the word of God. But I, I, I asked the Lord that, and he said, no, you have to have truth before right. you have salvation. A absolutely. If you don't have truth, how can you, the shoes guide you if you, because they can guide you anywhere. So you have to have the truth. We as believers have to live by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God because it's the only truth we have yeah. to stand on. Right. Well, the Bishop, Bible said you shall know the truth and the truth shall make the, you free. And the truth shall make you, know, you free. You got to know the truth before you receive the spirit. And the spirit Amen. of the Lord is what brings liberty. Amen. 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 And the spirit of the Lord doesn't come upon you until you get saved. Right. You know, so you begin with the truth. Yes, sir. Amen. And if you don't get the truth, the full truth, not the truth that some people are teaching. And in, 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 I'm not going to talk about ministries, but just in the body of Christ today, people are adapting to a truth that is not true. A way that seems right. A way that seems right. That's right, right, Bishop. That's good. The way that seems right, but it's not right. The only thing you can live by is the word of God rightly divided. Amen. That's why the scripture tells us to study to show thyself approved unto the Lord. Yeah. You know, can I say something? Yes, some sir. of the stuff that they're preaching nowadays, you know, some people call it greasy grace and so on and so forth. And it's nice, it's motivational, it's inspirational. That's right. What the whole deal is, is what they're preaching is a good time gospel. And that's not what, what Jesus was trying to do. That's not what Paul was trying to do. You know, the, we, we're really in warfare. The Bible War. declares, you know, several times that we do have an enemy, a roaring lion, a wolf in sheep clothing. That's the devil seeking whom he may devour. And he's that's coming right. to kill, steal, and destroy. That's what Jesus told us. Amen. So we have an enemy. So we're in a battle. You know, so therefore, if when you go into battle, before you go into battle, you go into boot camp, and boot camp is to instill disciplines in you. Amen. You know, that's what that's what boot camp is for, to give you courage, to instill, give you stoutness of heart, like physical that. strength, yes, and to teach you disciplines of war. Like and a lot of stuff that's being preached right now has no discipline in it. Amen. You know, so but we're called to make disciples of Christ. And the root word there in disciple is the word discipline. discipline. And a lot of people are not disciplines in the ways of I God. Like yes, they sir. think grace is their license to sin or do whatever they want to. So a lot of Christians are undisciplined and they don't like a disciplined word, you know. Amen. You know, but Amen. the word of God said that all scripture is God breathed or inspired, yes. inspired yes. by the Holy Spirit. And first of all, it's profitable for doctrine, then for reproving, for correction and instruction in righteousness. Amen. If you look at those things, those things denote discipline, discipline in your belief, in your worship, in your, your view of God, your, uh, disciplines in seeing things for, for what they really are, discipline in, in correcting uh, uh, bad behavior that may come from well-meaning uh, traditions, and then instruction in righteousness to actually show how to walk in the righteousness of Christ Amen. through Christian discipline. And a lot of people don't want to be disciplined. They really want to live by yeah. their feelings. So therefore, they're not prepared to be soldiers. Soldiers can't be overly emotional. Mm -mm. They got to be stout Ooh. of heart. They got to be thick skinned. Because, you know, they, they, they got to be always sober-minded in their thinking. Yes. You know, they can't look in the bushes and think, well, that's just a rabbit behind the bushes. Yeah. They must always, you know, look and say, this might be an enemy. So, therefore, they reprove things to see, is this the hand of God or is this the hand of Satan? 
Wow. Is this the, 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 the work of God or is this the work of the devil? And you do that by being rooted in the it's truth. True. The first Amen. thing they teach you is how. You know, they don't teach you uh, uh, so much how to use your weapon, but they teach you how to, how to build up and fight the enemy, Amen. even the uh, hand-to-hand -hand combat. Before Amen. you learn how to shoot a weapon, you learn hand-to-hand -hand combat. Yes, sir. Because, you know, you might get to the point where the enemy is so close that the weapon <laughs> ain't going to work. Come you on. need some hand-to-hand -hand combat. Yes, so, therefore, what means? That means your body has to be a weapon. You know, and so it is with the word of God. Amen. People always want to use, use scripture and use their Bible, but you need to have the word in you. Amen. Because when the devil gets close, Jake David said, thy word have I hid in my heart. That means that, that my, my spiritual man is a weapon. That's right. the, the word of God is That's the sword right. of the spirit, but the sword is within me. Like you know, that. these, these are like uh, lethal that. weapons right here. Yeah. The spiritual man himself. Ooh. So therefore, because the word is in me, I won't sin against you because I'll fight against the I devil. Like that. Not based upon the Bible that I have on the kitchen table or yes. in my brief case or in or in the uh, in my car or in my seat you yeah. know it's because the word is in me i'm gonna leave the weapon myself you know we have to train ourselves spiritually to be walking in the word That's so it. that our body will be like a sword of the spirit because jesus himself is called the word of god yes. amen? amen because he was full of the word he was full yes. of truth full of grace and full of truth yes. and he wants to give us that same grace and that same truth so that we might have the word hidden in our heart that yes. becomes part of us Hallelujah. so that when the enemy gets close there is something within us that fights off the wiles of the devil amen, amen? That, that fights off the materialism everything the, the power that you the people seek after because they want they want power they want position they want all these things but if you have the word girded in you as truth you stand on it and it alone it shines more light in the life of others than your desires to be wealthy than your desires to be up front than your desires to have your way the word of god will shine lighter in you right. that's Amen. what i heard when you said that bishop when you become the word that's yeah. how jesus defeated the devil in the in the in the in the desert right he used the word right the devil came at him in matthew 4 and 4 you ain't got to go there but he defeated the devil and made him leave his presence with the word of God. Right. That was in him. He didn't pull that out the scroll. He didn't have a Bible. So let me read this. Let me read this to you. He never scrolled. He was the walking word. Yes, sir. And the, and, and the Bible says that we should be living epistles. Come on. We Amen. ought to be the word walking. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, look at verse 12. Verse 12. Ephesians uh, 6 and 12. 6 and 12. Here's the reason why we not need to be able to stand against the wiles of the devil instead of standing against one another. Because we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Amen. Your battle is not with people. Mm -mm. Your problem is not with people. Mm -mm. It's the spirit that operates within people. Hallelujah. See, Jesus said when you was in the world, the world loved you. Yeah. Because you had the same spirit. You basically live by the ways of the same kingdom, the kingdom oh, of darkness. Yeah. You thought you was doing your own thing, but you was really doing what the enemy has set you up to do. He said, we didn't wrestle not against flesh and blood, against not against human people, but here's our fight. Our fight is against principalities, Come on, against Bishop. powers. Now, principalities and powers are, 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 are a level of, of angelic existence. Yes. Amen? Because I believe there's, there's nine angelic levels, which is, uh, I think it's, uh, let me see if I can name them. Angel, archangel, seraph, cherub, uh, principalities, thrones, dominions, powers, uh, and I think it's virtues. No, dominions. Dominions. Those are, those are nine angelic levels of powers or I existence. So you're wrestling against Amen. principalities and powers, demonic principalities and powers. You know, fallen angels, principalities and powers against because remember, Satan was the anointed cherub. Yeah. But when he fell, he became demonic. Yeah. So he's a principality and a power. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Against the rulers of the darkness of this world. See, the darkness of this world is ruled by demonic power. When you see evil in the world, it's because of demonic influence. That's right. All the social injustice, yes, that's sir. demonic influence. Yes, sir. Come on, All the crime out Come of control. On, the drug addiction, the gang violence is all 
demonic influence. Yes, sir. All the same sex, you know, legalization on, and, and transgender stuff, which brings confusion to the point where people don't know what bathroom to go to, and God's not the author of confusion. This is because of spiritual wickedness in high places. This is because of powers and, 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 and rulers of, uh, of the darkness of this world. Yes, sir. You know, against spiritual wickedness in high places, strongholds. Yes. That's why it's so hard to rid you know, the society that we have of all this demonic influence because people are turning away, turning away from God, who's the only mm, power. Only. Come on, you know, Bishop. Where we allow the spirit of the Lord to come in and take control, there's liberty. Mm. But when we don't allow the spirit of God to come in and take control, Satan will fill in the gap. He will yes. come in and Amen. occupy that That's unoccupied right. place. When we exercise God, out, we invite Satan in. There's no ifs, ands, buts about it. There's no middle ground. When you push God out, you are actually inviting Satan in, and that's why we have all the problems that we have in the world. The Bible says righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is reproach, the downfall, the shame, the folly of any people. And the United States is in, the, shall I say, the world is in the condition that it's in because people have turned away from God. Even Christians are under demonic influence because they have, the churches are splitting over political on, issues. Bishop. There's no way in the world that we should let political issues be more powerful than the unity that the Bible says we're supposed to have. Amen. That's ridiculous. Amen. It's because you have compromised your Christian view. You have taken a bipolar stance and you can't see where God is operating still within the body of Christ because you won't find common ground. You're trying to find your own ground wow. and stand so far to the right that you no longer bear the infirmity of the weak. Maybe some people are a little weak in faith, a little, little off in their doctrine. That's no reason for you to move out from under that. We're supposed to bear one another's burden, forbear, and so on and so forth. And if you're that anointed, Usher in the truth where there is error. Usher Amen. in love Amen. where there yes, is sir. hatred. Usher yes, in peace where there is confusion yes, if sir. you're that anointed. Because the Bible said, blessed are the peacemakers, Makers. for they shall become, become the children of God. If there's no peace in your home, you should be a peacemaker, Mr. and Mrs. Anointed. If there's no peace in your church, you should be a peacemaker, Mr. and Mrs. Anointed. That's what I'm saying. You know, we're wrestling against principalities. If you believe the enemy has come into, you know, the body of Christ, the congregation that you're in, then you need to make a spiritual stand to eradicate that demonic order. Because if you don't, if you run from it, every time it shows up, you'll find come yourself on. running again. Somewhere along the way, you got to stand. We're going to talk about that running stuff in, yes. a, in a few minutes. In a few minutes. Amen. Yes, sir. But you need to understand our fight is not against one another. Yes. Our fight is against principalities. Yes. Spiritual wickedness in high, high places. Yes. Amen? Amen. Quit fighting one another because it ain't about you. It ain't about her. It's about the devil, the devil. that's causing Amen. division, emulation, strife, sedition. That's the work of the flesh. Amen. But the fruit of the spirit is love and joy and peace, meekness, kindness, temperance, long-suffering, faithfulness. The fruit of the spirit produce those things, and guess what? The devil does not like that atmosphere. He, he hates it. the spirit of love. Can't stand it. Because where there is unity and love and peace, the Bible says, according to Psalm 133, he commands a blessing, Amen. even life forevermore. And what, what God commands cannot be negotiated out of existence. Ooh. Amen. Hallelujah. So if he commands a blessing, then Hallelujah. you're going to be blessed. That's why I try to walk in peace with all people. Yes. You know, a lot of folk talk about me behind my back. I still try to walk in peace with all that's within me. Amen. And God keeps commanding a blessing upon my life and upon this ministry. Amen. 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 Not to say I don't have any problems, tro troubles, broke my foot and everything else. But nevertheless, I still feel like I'm blessed. Amen. Amen. I have heartaches and, and trials and tribulations just like anybody else. But it seems like God always provides a way out. He keeps he sprinkling joy upon he me. Does. And sometimes he'll rain it upon he me, does. you know, to keep me encouraged and keep me walking in his way. Because I try endeavor to stand upon the truth. I try to keep myself girded from the wiles of, this, of the devil, from the wiles of the God of this world, and all the influence of Antichrist. That is now in existence. Because Amen. You're a thermostat, Bishop. <laughs> what? You're a thermostat. You gotta explain that. See, some people are, 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 are thermostats and some people are thermometers. 
thermometer takes the temperature. Yeah. A thermostat sets the temperature. Yeah. Watch out, boy. So, 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 <laughs> so, how you able to keep on going is you set the temperature no matter what comes at you. That's how we as believers have to be. We have to be victorious like that. That's good, man. Amen. So, so stop being a, 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 a thermometer and be a thermostat. That's good. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> You must have got that from your wife. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't know. She might have said something. <laughs> I like what you said about we supposed to be the ones to usher it in. Yeah. Amen. And in the next verse, it tells you, wherefore, take on, verse 13. Mm -hmm. It says, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Okay, just say that again. Wherefore, there, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God. Now go back to verse 11. Amen. Amen. Read verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God. Now go back to 13. Amen. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor the of God. The whole armor. The whole. Not part of it. Not part. Now here, here he is. So he reiterates the whole armor, armor. of God. Take, Amen. You got to have it all. Yes, sir. Because every part is vital. Go ahead. Amen. Because that ye may be able to withstand in the evil day, having it done all to stand. See, you can't usher in. The, 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 the atmosphere, the, the, the love that needs to be ushered in in certain atmospheres or certain situations or circumstances if you flee. Yeah. You have to put on the whole armor of God to be able to stand because so many of us run mm -hmm. and, 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 and we, we should be standing. Yeah. But if you run, you cannot change things. But here's, here's the deal. Everybody can stand. Everybody can stand. And what? But everybody can't withstand. Amen. There's a difference. Amen. See, see, standing is just kind of maintaining, you know, the position. Withstand means stuff is coming at you. Amen. You, you got to be able to take some stuff. Amen. See, everybody can stand when, when everything's good and in place. When but when good. stuff is out of joint, Come on. when folks are hating on you, Come on. when folks don't like you, treating you funny, treating you funny, you know, you, know, you got to be able to withstand. withstand. You got to put up with that. You got to bear it. You know, you can't run. And see, the evil day, I used to think the evil day is like, you know, in the great tribulation, oh, it's, you know, the day coming. of judgment when you're going to yeah. miss out on heaven. But the evil day is a time of evil persecution, temptation to do evil, you know, evil attacks, yeah. where you got to make a decision whether you're going to do what the flesh say do or do, what right, do the righteousness of God that he requires of you. So there, there, there comes a time or days when you are faced with choices whether you're going to wild out in the flesh Come on, or you're going to maintain the disciplines in the spirit. Come on. And then after you've done all that you could do to stand, stand after stand. what it's saying, after you done took it all, after yeah. you done, after you on, done put up with it, you done long Come suffered, on, you know, stand, stay right there. Stand, look at verse 14. You know, stand, stand. Therefore, therefore. Come on. Having your loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, stay right there. Your loins gird about with truth. The Bible said, look, look at Psalms uh, 51 and 6. All right? Your loins gird about with truth. Have mercy upon me, O Lord. Oh, no, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Behold, thou desireth truth. Loins gird about, gird about with truth. In the inward parts, denoting the loins. Yes. And in the hidden part, thou make me to know wisdom. Again, oh, truth. truth. Yeah. All right? Because godly wisdom is based upon truth. God wants truth in the inward parts. Look at Jeremiah 31 and 33. That's why you have to have your loins girded up with truth. truth. Truth in the inward part. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. We can say the children of God. And we now, because of Christ, are now adopted. We call him Abba Father. We are now the children of God because through him we have the power or the authority you know, to become sons of God. Amen. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law, my truth, my word, my commands, my precepts in their inward parts. Yeah. Lawrence girded about, girded about with truth. And write in their hearts, which is pointing to your inward parts, and will be oh, their God and they shall be my hallelujah. people. That Hallelujah. vital parts, your inward parts, yeah. your loins, your intestines, yeah. your, 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 your pancreas, yes. your liver, your kidneys, your inward parts. Amen. Amen. Your reproductive system. Amen. On your inward parts. 
all those vital organs that make the outer man function. Amen. 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 A word on the inside that controls the outside. A word in the spirit man Hallelujah. that controls the natural man. Yes. That's what he's saying here. But if your loins are not girt about with truth, there's not a word on the inward part, then guess what? There's nothing Ooh. in you that would cause you to stand because it takes courage to stand when everybody's shooting at you. Yes, it sir. takes courage to yes, stand. Yes, it is. Yes, it does. And people lose heart, lose courage, dare I say this here, lose faith. Come on. In the word of God, and they move away to establish a lower level of faith. Come on. Okay, see, see, see. Amen. I know people say, oh, well, no. no, that's what it is. Yeah. When you cannot endure persecutions and hardships mm. like a good soldier, mm. you know, then you're not fit for battle. Come so on. what you do is you'll flee where the battle is not as hot. Wow. It's called retreating. You're called basically a coward. Man. A defector. Amen. Amen. Because you left the battle. Yes, sir. And sometimes, you know, the battle is in your own house. Yeah. Wow. You got divorced. Wow. Because you, you left the battle. Yes, sir. Uh-oh. That's good. Mm. That's here. Didn't like the rules at home, so you ran away from home. Yeah. Well, you, you fled from the battle. That's right. Wow. God never promised us a flower bed of ease. He gave us, he promised us strength to endure. Yes. Hallelujah. He promised us support to be able to stand. He yes. said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Yes. I'll never let, allow you to be tempted or tested or push you into a battle that you can't withstand. Yeah. I'm not going to let you fight a battle that you, that's impossible for you to win, where all you're going to get is tore up from the floor up. No, no, no. Oh. You are more than a conqueror. So if I allow you into the battle, you can expect victory. Ooh. But a lot of people don't get victory Ooh. because they're unwilling to stand in the disciplines of a good soldier. Come you wasn't prepared for battle. If you don't make it out of boot camp, you can't never go to battle. Come on, Bishop. And some of us are still in boot camp trying to go into battle. Wow. If you don't overcome your flesh, you should not be up front in the fivefold, and you should never be a pastor. Come on. All these pastors that are falling, just like Justin Bieber, come on, come on, a pastor, fail. you know, the Hillsong pastor, just, just fail. Yeah. You know, fooling around on his wife. Wow. He wasn't prepared. When he met that girl, what is it, in Central Park? Yeah. Met the young lady he's around with in Central Park. That was warfare. Yeah. That was the enemy that, walked up and said, how yes, you doing? Yes. Yes. That was his evil day, and he made the evil decision. Because Woo. he wasn't prepared for the battle. That Too busy trying to be a slick stand. pastor. Yes. A cool pastor rather than a strong soldier. Yes. It ain't about being cool. It's about being strong in the Lord yes. and in the power of his mind. That's what it said. Amen. That's what it says right here. In, in, in Ephesians, you know, chapter 10. Find me, my brother. Be strong, strong in, the, in Lord the Lord and in the power of his might. You can have all the weaponry, all the weaponry you want, but if you have no strength behind the weapon, you still going to fail. Come on. A soldier needs to know how to hold his sword. Come on. That's why you go to build boot camp first to build up the strength of a person. Wow. Amen? Okay, Amen. I'm just saying. David did that. David did that when he, when he faced Goliath. Uh, 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 Saul tried to put his armor on him. <laughs> yeah. And David said, no, nah, I'm going to come in the name of the Lord. He came in the name of the Lord and took out the giant. Right. When, 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 we, when we are presented, I know you've been presented with, the, with, with so many tests and trials as a pastor. Just me as a minister and as a regular man have been tested yeah. so many times and, and things have come my way. But if I did not stand yeah. in, on, the word of the, on the word of the Lord, I would have failed. But, but see the whole deal is when, Dave, when he didn't put on Saul's armor, that's man's armor. But yeah. when he went out there with the slingshot, he did have the armor of the Lord. When he, he said, the armor I come, the come in the name of the, of the Lord. Lord. He you took know, off Saul's armor. You know, the name of the Lord is a strong yeah. tower. Yeah. It's Saul. a buckler and a shield. Amen. Yeah. So basically, when you carry that name, you actually have the armor of God. Armor of God. Amen. When you actually have the that's, name of the Lord, right. you have the armor of God. Amen. It was an inward armor. But that Amen. God did basically a, a, a physical thing. You know, with a with a spiritually with spirit. did something behind the veil. You have to see behind the veil to see that David did have. I mean, yeah, David did have on armor when he faced Goliath. Yes, he but he had the armor of God, which was yes. the name of God. Amen. When we do things in the name of the Lord, when we yes. stand in the name of the Lord, when we resist in the name of the Lord, when we walk and live our life in the name of the Lord, we are carrying the word in us, the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And we carry the name of God. Whatever we do, we do in His name. Hallelujah. So therefore, we take upon the armor of, of the Lord. Lord. Because by his name, we have our righteousness. By his name, we have our faith. Yes. It is by his, his name, name we have the gospel. Yes. Amen? Amen? 
So when we, when, we, when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, we actually have the armor of God. When he came in the name of the Lord against Goliath, he had the armor of God. And in that rock was, was the sword of the Spirit, Amen. I believe. Hallelujah. Understand? Hallelujah. You know, That's because he, remember they said he took five stones. Yes. Five represent, represent the number of grace. Right. There is power in grace. Grace Amen. is more than unmerited favor. It's the power from heaven to influence That's the heart. Yes. So he had a bag full of grace. Yes. But he only took out one stone. Why? Yes. Because by one stone, one rock, Jesus Christ, yes. whereby which we have the Ooh, five stones of grace. On. So all he needed was Hallelujah. that one name, that, that one stone, stone, that one rock, that one name caused demons to tremble. Hallelujah. It is that one name that kind of causes mountains to move. It is that one name by which we overcome this world. Hallelujah. That one name by which we are saved upon this earth, and that's the name of Jesus. God gave us only one name. You can't do it through, through Muhammad, through Buddha. He said there's only one, one name, name whereby which we must be saved, and that is the name of Yeshua, and we call him Jesus yes. in the English vernacular. Hallelujah. Amen. That's excellent, Bishop. But I'm going to put the, my, my laws in the inward parts because he desires truth in the inward parts of man, Hallelujah. in the heart of man, all right? Amen. Not just in your head, not just in your hand, not just in your notes, mm -hmm. but in your heart. And if you do that, you'll be able to stand against anything, and you will not sin against God. Amen. And I'm not going to be one of those preachers to tell you, well, you're going to sin anyway. I'm not telling you that. No. No. I'm telling you, <laughs> telling you that you can do all things through, through Christ. Christ. Who gives you the strength to do it? Amen. Amen. We got to stop right. having a form of godliness, you know, and deny, or shall I say, void of the power that makes us godly. But we need to have, really have true godliness and true righteousness, and we do it by way of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Walk in the Spirit, you won't fulfill the lust of the spirit. flesh. It's not by your spirit, but by the Spirit of the Lord. Amen. All right. Um, what verse we on now? 14 still. Okay. We, uh, no, did we move? no, no, no. We're going to 15 now. Stand no, therefore. No. Did we do 14? Stand therefore, having your loins girded about with truth and having on the breastplate of righteousness. Okay, the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness yes. ought to be in your heart. Amen. Loins of truth, having the breastplate of righteousness. Righteousness Amen. covers the heart, covers Amen. the chest. Amen. All right? Now, I said the breastplate. Didn't say, you know, the upper armor or the torso plate. It said the breastplate yeah. of righteousness. That means it just covers the front. It doesn't cover the back. Come on, Bishop. Let me tell you why it only covers Come the on. front and not the back. Because those that turn in Christian world for turn from the battle, mm -hmm. there's no protection when you turn. You're exposed. There's no protection when you turn. That's right. If you're going to turn from the battle, you know, and turn from your Christian precepts, you leave your back exposed and there's no protection. Amen. Your job is to stand. Amen. 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 Flee you for lust, but that don't mean you're running from the devil. That means you're actually standing. When you flee you for lust, that's actually a spiritual stand. I know when to get the flesh out of here. Ooh, come on, bitch. You know, that's only because the spirit is still standing. It is, it's that standing spirit that caused you to get your body out of there. That's good, bitch. Amen. Amen. Flee the youthful lust. Don't, don't flee in the spirit. Flee in the flesh. Yes. Get that body out, out of, of there. there. And that, that's what causes you to stand in the spirit. I'm going to take a stand. What do you mean? I'm leaving. Amen. So what am I doing? By leaving, I'm actually standing yes. in righteousness. Come on. Because if I turn from my Christian precepts, ain't no protection. I'm going to fall to sin. And that's the only thing that's happening to a lot of believers. That when the battle is hot, they turn from their precepts Amen. and they have no protection. Amen. Amen. You'll turn your back, back on, on, on God. And you really don't turn your back on the devil. The Bible said, resist him, he'll flee. Amen. Submit yourself, therefore, unto God. Resist the devil. Stand against him, and he'll flee. Amen. Submit to the power of God. Submit yourself to the wisdom of God. Amen. Submit yourself to the strength of God. Hide yourself in the shadow of the Almighty. Amen. And guess what? But keep facing the devil. Amen. Don't run. Amen. And he'll flee. That's right. Amen? Because he's Amen. running from the God stance within you. Hallelujah. Amen? And, Bishop, that right there is awesome because, because God made it that way. Amen. He made it so that you won't have a way to run away from the battle. But what he did make it that way for is for unity. Yeah. See, because if we are in battle, yeah. you and I, and I got my breastplate on, yeah. you got your breastplate on, but our backs are like this. <laughs> so the enemy can't get at neither one of right. us through our backs. I got your back. Because we got each other's back. Yeah. I am my brother's keeper. That's good, dog. We're standing back to back, but we're fighting the enemy. But, but, but we have so many leave. Yeah. Our brother with his back exposed. Right. 
did, did you ever see that movie Gladiator? Yes, sir. You know that movie Gladiator when when he got there and he, he had them joined together. Yes, sir. All the all the all the, all the gladiators together when they when they had them surrounded and, then, and they got in a little circle. They got in and a they were back to each other. Back to back. Exactly. So and, they, and and they protected one. And another. they protected one another yeah. and won the battle. Yeah. And exactly. won the battle. That's how we have to be as Christians. We Absolutely. have to be able to stand back to back. Absolutely. Fight the devil. We don't help the devil talk about the other one. Right. We talk don't about you behind your Come back. on, man, behind your back. That's right. a good one. <laughs> but we don't, we, we're, not, we're not called to do that. Yeah. We're called to be our brother's keeper. Yeah. We're called to stand back to back and fight the devil and become victorious. That's why God created that way. Yeah. You can't turn your back on Christian warfare. You can't. You know, God made you more than conquerors, so you're supposed to stay in the battle. Amen. Until you, know you overcome, you know, everything the enemy has set up. Everything that the enemy Hallelujah. has set up. Well, I don't care where he sets it up. At. Don't leave your home, brother. Amen. Stand there and fix it with your wife. Save For the it. sake of the children, fix it with your wife. Don't go to the divorce court. Well, I'm tired. That's okay. God, God wait upon the Lord. He'll renew your strength. Amen. Amen. Because you're supposed to love her like Christ loved the church. Go all the way to the cross. If you suffer the cross and give your life for it, guess what? Behind, beyond the cross is resurrection power. Amen. 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 God will resurrect you. Amen. You might well, she's killing me. She's killing me. That's why God will raise you up if you suffer the cross for her, on her behalf. On her behalf. Amen. Amen. This is warfare. Amen. Because to fight for your marriage is really fighting against, you know, the strategy of the enemy. Because the yeah. enemy, the brilliant brought, brought discord to your marriage. I'm talking to somebody out there. Yes, you are. Amen. You know, learn how to love your children the right way. The Bible yes. said train them up in the way that they should go. There, you know, I've learned that there's not a specific one template set for every child. Yes. You know, I, I, had, I had to raise Christopher a certain way. All from the foundation of the Bible. I had to do Ryan a different way, uh, Matthew a different way, Olea a different way in order to get them where they're supposed to be. I made mistakes along the way because I thought that first template was, was so good. It was so right. It worked right. so well. But it didn't work so good on love. Yeah. yeah. But that's true, bitch. That's true. <laughs> but that's the true. word of God, the truth of God, Amen. opened my eyes to some things. And I finally, I think I, I think I got it together and didn't do so bad, you know, uh, the, these last bunch of years. Amen. Amen. Because they turned out to be pretty good people. Amen. Amen. And look at, look at verse 15. This is why. This is why. And your feet shall with the perspiration of the gospel of peace. Amen. See, your feet have that. You said something one time, uh, I think it was last night. You said that that's the foundation. Yeah. yeah. The, the feet are the foundation of the body. Feet are the foundation of the body. Yeah, that's what you stand and, for. And when you stand with the preparation of the gospel of peace, that's your foundation. Absolutely. The word of God is your foundation to stand on. Right, the gospel. You, the gospel right. of God. So you got to stand on it and it alone, yeah. nothing else. So when the enemy comes in like a flood, you're able to be able to stand. Yeah. The, the, the wind, the, the tree that's planted by the river of water, it, 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 it gets beat down. Right. But all it does is bend. It don't break. Right. And that's how we got to be able to become. When we're standing on the foundation of the gospel, when, we're, when, the, found, then when the gospel is our foundation, right. the, the winds, the, the, the trials, the tribulations will come. Right. But we won't break. Right. We'll 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 bend. We'll 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 be in the wind. We'll be in the right. storm. But we won't break. Right. That's why we have to stand on the word of God, because the word of God tells us, I can do all things through Christ. Right. Which strengthens me. Right. That's my foundation. Right. Now, if you look, if you look at the Lord's Great Bible Truth in the Gospel. Of peace, you say, well, this is all the word of God. It really is, yeah. but 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 the word of God has different elements and characteristics to it. You know, when it talks about your loins girded about with truth, yeah. that is basically to strengthen you, you know, in, in your fight that you might continue to walk with God. Amen. You know, but the gospel of peace also helps you to walk with God. But the gospel of peace is what reconciles you first to God. So you got to be reconciled first to God. That's at the beginning of all things. That's yeah. the foundation of all things. That's why they call it the gospel of peace. peace. You're no longer an enemy of the cross or an enemy of God through sin and rebellion and iniquity. But because of the gospel, embracing the gospel, now you're at peace with God. You're at yeah, one with man. God. Amen. Hallelujah. It is part of the word. It is yeah. based upon truth. But it is the part of the truth of God's word that brings us at peace or oneness with God. Because when we believe the gospel, 
through Jesus Christ, we believe the gospel, we get reconciled back to God. Yes. Now, because of the same gospel of peace, we learn now how to be reconciled one with, one with another Come because on. through the gospel, we've been given the ministry of reconciliation. Yeah. Amen? And then we're at peace with ourselves. Because some of us were so depressed and so messed up inside because sin had drug us to a place of darkness. But once we got set free through the knowledge of the gospels, we are at peace with God. We are at peace with one another. And we were at peace within ourselves. That's why they call it the gospel, gospel of peace. peace. We begin with the gospel. Yes, From right, there, so. there are other truths in the epistles and the teachings of Christ, you know, mm -hmm. that, 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 that are beyond reconciliation with God. But now it teaches how to walk with God. How to do warfare in God, yes. how to do the things that please God, you know, so that we would be blessed of God all the Amen. days of our life. Amen. Okay. He blesses our obedience. Hallelujah. So your feet, the foundation of, of your body, the foundation of your of your walk, walk with, with God, with, with God should begin with the gospel that brings reconciliation. It gotta begin with you and God coming together as one, yes. being made one through the gospel. And that gospel is, 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 has been ratified by the Amen. blood of Jesus Christ upon the cross. Because That's of that excellent. blood, that gospel became the gospel of peace. That's excellent. Amen. Amen. That's good. I love that. Okay, verse 16. We're almost done. We only got We're almost left. there. Look at this. Above, Go ahead. Above all. Say that again. Above all. Say that one more time. Above all. You might want to say it with a hoop. <laughs> Above <now>. all. Above <laughs> all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Taking the shield of faith. Above wherewith all. You, Above all. Taking the shield of faith. Wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. How many darts? All. How many darts? All of them. We overcome every temptation of the devil through, by the shield of faith. Yes. For all I trust, trust him. him. F A I T H. Come on, For Bishop. all I trust him. Mm. When Justin Bieber's pastor saw the woman in Central Park, he should have trusted God, not his flesh. Whew. That's, that's all that should have happened. Trust Man. God. Flee you for lust. You know, fornication should never once be Hallelujah. named amongst you. That's in chapter 5. Should yeah. never once be named amongst you as becoming the saints. Yeah. Trust God that his word is trust true God. and it's there for your protection. He would have still been passing, they wouldn't have fired him. Yeah. Had he just obeyed God's word. Oh, my God. Amen. But he didn't operate in faith. He didn't trust God yeah. through the temptation. That's right. Take the shield of faith. It is the most important part of the armor of God. Amen. The shield of faith. And, you know, uh, when you look at the Roman shield, it mm -hmm. covered 90% of the body. Yeah, it was a big shield. It wasn't a little big old shield. It wasn't no little Most shield. Most shield was, you know. That baby, yeah. you, could, you could hold it. And it'll cover you. All you had to do was peek over. Yeah, but you listen. But you didn't get to total cover until you kneeled down. Until you kneeled down, you had to you had to peek up over. You, you had, had to be down. You had to get into a Come position on, of humility. Uh, woo, that's good. And see, a lot of people you know, are still getting hit because they they holding the shield in, in pride. Yeah. And they getting hit all in the head, and their doctrine's getting jacked up. You know, they getting hit all in the feet, and their walk gets all crooked because they won't humble themselves. Pride come before fall. You see him there with the faith, with the shield. Boom! He took an arrow. He fell because he was up there. Up, you, up, you can't be in pride and be covered completely in faith. Come on, Bishop. But when you humble yourself, yeah. then then that shield of faith will cover you, you know, from from head Woo. to toe. Hallelujah! I love. Hey Amen. But you I can't get outside it. that word. That's yes. what that's all about. Yes. The shield of faith. Faith come by hearing yeah, and hearing by the, the word. word you see, when you lift up in pride, you might have a level of faith, but but there there's certain levels. Of arrogance and unbelief that come oh, when you when you get outside the word of God and all of a sudden boom you get here. But man, he knew so much word. Man, he he yeah. he worked come miracles on. and everything. When he got outside the word of God, yeah. how did he happen? That? He stood on his own two feet. He lifted his head above measure. He, he got lifted up himself. in pride yes, and he got taken out by the yeah, fiery on. dart of the wicked. Come on, Bishop. You know you won't quench all the fiery darts where well, you quench yes. a lot of them. But you know all, all it took was one dart for Justin Bieber's passing. Amen. Yeah, come on. You know just took one dart. One dart would take you out. So you need to humble yourself behind the shield of faith. Amen. And you'll be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. That, I love that. I Amen. love that. That you have to come below the shield right. to humble yourself. Right. And you're also in a position of battle, too. Right. So you're always prepared. Right. And you're always covered when you have that shield. Right. I like that. The shield that's, of faith. that's excellent, Bishop. Let's go on. Let's move forward. All right. And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Okay, helmet of salvation. Amen. All right. Let this mind be in you that's also in Christ Jesus. You got to know that you're saved. Know what a saved person 
uh, walks like, know it and have the mind of Christ, think like a saved person, protect your mind, Amen. you know, salvation, victory, and deliverance, protect their mind, because the, the real battle is right up here in your mind. Amen. That's why you need to be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Amen. Satan defeats you in your mind. Remember, you know, when David fought Goliath, it's only because they looked at him and were intimidated by him and in their mind thought he was undefe undefeatable. Amen. But David came, smiling and proud of everybody in the, in the army, a sheep herder, a sheep herder, shepherd, and declared, because he had a different mindset, who is this uncircumcised Philistine that dare defy the armies of the, of the Lord? Amen. Who is he? He's nobody. Amen. He had the mindset of a conqueror. Yeah. So yes, like sir. the hands of the, 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 the helmet of salvation. You, you got to know that you're going to overcome. Yeah. You got to know that you're going to win at this. You got to know that you can get through this temptation, That's get through right, this persecution, and right. be able to stand. And when, when, when the smoke clears, you're holding the banner of Jehovah Nisi, Amen. the banner of victory. Amen. Amen. Take on the helmet, the helmet of salvation and the sword, sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Amen. You need a sword. Why? Because I don't care how much armor you got on or how big a shield you got. If you don't have a sword to fight back, after a while, fight he'll back. wear you down and you'll drop that shield. Yes, sir. You'll lose fight strength. Back. You got to take the Hallelujah. enemy out. Hallelujah. He'll beat that arm until it cracks. Amen. But if you got a sword to fight out the enemy, Amen. guess what? He can't do that much damage to you. Amen. You must have a sword. You just don't sit there with your armor and take it. Sometimes you got to come up and wage war. You got to be offensive. Amen. Don't just be defensive. Every time the enemy come in your house, you're trying to rebuke it. No. Put a rebuke to the point where he can't even come inside your house. Come on. You know, the United States is smart. You know, when's the last time you see somebody bring a battle to the United States? Not. When have you ever seen war? The last time you seen anything close to it was 9-11. Yeah. That was it. They had to sneak and do that. That wasn't even warfare. That was terrorism. But when have you ever, when is the last time you actually seen soldiers marching on the shores of the United States? Amen. Pearl Harbor. But they had to fly in to do it. They flew in, flew out, and they regretted every bomb they dropped. <laughs> <It> so did. <laughs> they didn't never do it again. <laughs> because when you when you start making plans to wage war against the United States, they fight you on your own shores. Amen. You're not bringing that to New York. You're not bringing that to Texas. Amen. You're not bringing that to Florida. Amen. You know, Hallelujah. we're gonna get you on your shores, and that's the way we need to be. Because we, we're able to do it. Let me show you. We're able to do this real quick. Uh, uh, Second Peter. I'm going to read through this real quick. Chapter, chapter 1, verse 2. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus Christ our Lord, according to as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him that has called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great precious promises, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, and beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith, Virtue and virtue, knowledge to knowledge, temperance to temperance, patience to patience, godliness to godliness, brotherly kindness to brotherly kindness, charities. For if these things be in you, in you. and abound, they yeah. make that you should never, neither Hallelujah. be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things, look at this, is blind Come and on. cannot see afar off, and has forgotten he was purged from his old sins. Wherefore the rather... Brother, give all diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things or grow in these things, you shall never fall. All yeah, right? Come on. For so an interest shall be ministered unto you abundantly in the everlasting kingdom of our Lord mm -hmm. and Savior, Jesus Christ. All right? Amen. Now, I said you'll be able to see afar off. That means you'll be able to see the enemy coming and you'll be able to fight him before yeah. he would come to your doorstep. Amen. Hallelujah. That's why the, that's why the United States have spies every place. Oh, man. You know, allies every place, and they say they begin to wage war against. They setting up plans. They building up tanks and this, that, and other. They building up chemical warfare. That's they right. building up nuclear bombs, and they begin to reach out. And folks say, "Stop what you're doing. Yes. Don't even try it. If you do, you will regret it." Come on, bitch. Because they've learned to see afar off, and God will give you the same vision to see the enemy coming before mm. he breaches your premises. Amen. Amen. Many times we, at least most of us, see the enemy coming. 
even into ministry, you hear me preaching against it yeah. about murmuring, complaining, yes, and disputing, sir. and folks would do it anyway. Why is he preaching against this? Because I see it coming. Yes, sir. And people that do it after you've preached it, got, obviously you're not born again. You mm. didn't hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Come on, Bishop. Because you got caught up in it mm. when you got warned not to do it. Yeah. The same way it goes. When you preach against fornication and you, all of a sudden people coming up pregnant out of yeah. wedlock. You preach against adultery, all of a sudden people come warned into the divorce court. Come you see it coming. Yeah. See it if coming. I see it coming, you ought to see it coming. You're the one involved in it. Hi. I'm just saying. Yeah. Gird up the loins. Put on Put the whole arm. On. God, God, if you really want righteousness, God will give you the eyes to see it. The passion to, 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 to desire it, the openness in the spirit to, to walk in it. Hallelujah. If you really want to be like Jesus, God's not going to hold back any good thing Amen. from you. If you hunger and thirst after righteousness, you shall be filled. Hallelujah. If you want to overcome, you shall have victory. If you want to be delivered, you shall have deliverance. Come on, Bishop. He will not hold back any good thing. Yeah. Don't sit up and say the devil made you do it. God gave you power <laughs> over him. Hallelujah. He's a defeated foe. He was defeated at Calvary. Quit, quit giving the, the devil power upon you when God gave you power to overcome Hallelujah. him. Hallelujah. Don't let the devil flip the script like he did to Adam and Eve. You're supposed to be smarter than that. Yes. The Bible said these scriptures are written for our admonition to warn us not to do what to they did, us. not to do what Israel did. Saw all these miracle signs and wonders parting of the Red Sea, and then you get in the wilderness and act a fool. Oh my God. My God. We ought to know better. Amen. You know, we, ought to, we, we really ought to know better. Yes, That's why the do. Bible said back then he winked at sin, but he's not winking at sin anymore, y'all. But he's calling for all men. Did I say all? Oh. Oh, I love the word all. Oh. Oh. All men to repent. Amen. All of y'all. All. Oh. All of us yes. to repent. Turn from your sin. All right? Okay. That's all we got to say today. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> I'm so sick of, man, of, of, of Christians operating in mess. I'm sick of and that. And being defeated. And being defeated. I mean, you. you, and think, you they, they think they got victory. Yeah. You, you've been set up to have victory. Right. But you're living a defeated life. Absolutely. Because you don't use the sword. You don't use the sword. Gonna pick up the armor. You won't pick up the armor. You ain't got no. You ain't got no strength. To, ain't, you got your armor sitting in the corner. Won't be strong in I'll the Lord and the power of His might, so you can't stand nothing. <laughs> armor sitting over there, bitch. I'll shine it. Yeah, yeah, nice and polished. Yeah, <laughs> baby, in the closet. Yeah, right. You got it on. We love polishing each other's armor. Yes, we do. Prophesying good things. The Lord uh -huh. said you got a new ministry. Yeah, the Lord you said you are gonna get a new house, y'all. You, know? you know what if the Lord prophesied? The Lord said you're gonna be dead in thirty days. Get your life together. Come on. Well, I rebuked the devil. Then you did in 30 days reviewing your body. Yeah. Didn't get your house in order. Come on. You know, because that's that's what the Lord does. He that's speaks truth. But we want good time prophecy. The Bible, they did that in the times of Jeremiah. Yes, sir. And the Bible said, you know, they prophesied good things when the Lord has not said and said the people love it to be so. Come on. We love when people prophesy good Come things. On. People living in fornication. Are oh, you blessed? What? Yeah, God, don't worry about what Pastor God said. You blessed. <laughs> you you blessed. can't be blessed in sin. You can't. You can't. The Bible said, if I regard iniquity Come in my on. heart, I know that the Lord won't hear me. How are you going to be blessed when you can't even get a prayer through? Come on, Bishop. Come on, somebody. Come Ooh. on, are we that dumb? Come on now. Read the scripture and don't quit reading what you believe and start believing what you read. That's excellent. Amen. Hallelujah. Let the Holy Spirit speak to you. Hallelujah. All right. Don't get mad because you get convicted. You know, Amen. receive the, the word and be converted. Amen. 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 <laughs> All right. Gird your loins up. All right. Amen. Go gird up them loins. Gird them up. Amen. Amen. I, I'm speaking to somebody. Gird up them loins. Yes. <laughs> and I ain't speaking spiritual. Amen. Okay, anyway. I'm, I'm speaking to somebody. I was about somebody. to go somewhere, I, but we almost, we, we threw, but. No, I already went there. They know I went there. Yes, sir. I ain't throw no curve. It's straight Come down on. the plate. Yes, sir. I gird up them loins. Gird them up. Gird them up. Lock them up. Keeps a lot of stuff from happening. Cut you, you know. Oh, good. Good, good time to go. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Good tomorrow. Thank you so much for tuning in. With that being said, God bless you. God bless your family. God bless America. Pray for our president going out and our president coming in. Amen. All right, and we'll see you next time. God bless you.